Hello, I'm Nicholas Powers with Aero Electronics, and I'm here in Germany, in Munich, Germany to be specific, at Infineon's headquarters, learning about what Infineon's doing in regards to engineering and how Infineon is making life easier for engineers. And with me is Jenny. Jenny, what have you been working on? Hello, Nick. Um, so I'm an online marketing engineer here at Infineon, and I basically work on a lot of tools uh, that can help the engineer and make his life better and easy. Uh, so my focus, especially even on the tools, is on a tool called Infineon Designer. Okay, well, before we dive right into that, how has engineering been changing? I mean, how, I mean, before these new tools came along, how did people actually start a design? That's a very interesting question, Nick. I mean, that is something we are actually trying to address. Uh, so if we see that traditionally, an engineer, uh, if an assignment is given to him, what he would do? He'd just pick up a blank paper, mm -hmm. he has a concept in his head, he just tries sketching a rough ideas like, oh yeah, here's my resistor, here's my load, here's my driver stage, so on and so forth. It's all in his head in a rough diagram. Mm -hmm. He just buys in the components, tries to solder it, and obviously it's not gonna work the first time. So he has to go through a few spins, like five or six spins, until he actually gets his prototype right. Uh, so this takes a lot of time a lot of resources, a lot of money spent on buying all of those components that went waste. Mm -hmm. So how we are trying to address this whole issue uh, with the tool is to step, uh, is to make the engineer step out from the traditional approach and go towards online prototyping before he actually starts designing his stuff. Okay, well, and the thing is a lot of people have kind of tried to enable online designing and prototyping and one thing we've seen, you were talking about kind of the hardware point of view where people are working on hardware, but it's not so much that way in engineering where somebody can be just a hardware engineer or you have just a software engineer. And I think Infineon has shown that a little bit and that you guys have a bunch of microcontrollers, so there's your software side of thing, as well as you have motor drivers and other things that require software but are driving hardware. Yeah. So most tools, you either have a digital tool, which is your coding environment, or you have an analog tool, which is your simulation environment and maybe a spice of some sort or um, any, other, um, on any other design tool. What have you guys done? Are you, it seems like you might be working to blend those together. Exactly, Nick. So uh, we have a tool that is the first in the world uh, which enables the engineer to simulate analog components along with digital components. Uh, for us here at Infineon, uh, our motto is the whole product to system strategy. Okay. And uh, for us to go from a product to a system, and when I take a system, it cannot just be analog components there. It's always analog plus digital. Mm -hmm. uh, and in order to do that, there are no other online simulators available outside that can combine the both. Okay. Uh, whereas with Infineon Designer, uh, you can bring in your microcontroller as well as the analog part of the circuit, put them together, there is a complete system out there. And all you have to do is, uh, Infineon has an amazing um, uh, microcontroller software called as Dave. <laughs> uh, which is pretty easy for you to download and it's it's based on an Eclipse environment. Okay. So you just go code your uh, microcontroller over there and then you uh, build your uh, project and all you have to do is just drag and drop your hex files into the microcontroller and you're good to go. The whole code is inside the tool and it's just one system right there at one simulator. So now you've got, you can see your how your software is going to influence your hardware. Yes. And one of the things with Infineon Designer is you guys have pre-built a lot of these circuits using reference designs that Infineon put together so people can start to play with it and see exactly how powerful this tool is, right? You are right, Nick. Uh, so at the moment, uh, we have a lot of application circuits already built in. Mm -hmm. So uh, when one of our customers or one of our users has an initial idea in his head as to what he wants to do, say for example, a lighting application, and he feels, I want to play with brightness of a light. So he just comes here and logs into Infineon Designer. He goes to our libraries uh, where we have categorized all of our circuits based on the application types. Mm -hmm. So if he knows he wants lighting, he just goes to the lighting section, looks at all of the reference designs over there. Okay. And I'm pretty sure we have so many options out there <laughs> that he has something very similar to what he has in his head. So he has to just choose that particular circuit and just play around with it. So it's as easy as it, like we are making it as easy as we possibly can 
for all of our users in order to understand our product portfolio and make it easier and fun for him to design the actual hardware. Well, that sounds awesome. Do you have any examples that you can show us? Yeah, sure, Nick. Yeah. So right now, as I just spoke to you about uh, the lighting uh, application, so let's just take a look at that first. Mm -hmm. uh, but how exactly do you get to Infinite Design? Yeah, I guess that's the first question is where do I go for these tools? Yes. Uh, so uh, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is come to infinion.com. So you land on the landing page mm -hmm. and at infinion.com you see the section called as tools. Mm -hmm. So once you click on tools, you come to this amazing page over here. And here we have two sections, the product finders and the simulation tools over here. So here you have the infinite designer. Yeah, so at the moment we have about an, we have about 93 circuits. Mm -hmm. uh, and are you continuously adding to these circuits? Yes, this is an ever-growing library. Okay. Uh, we're pretty new, so the number is small. But uh, as you just keep on coming to us every day, each day, in and out, I'm pretty sure you will see this library ramping up very, very fast. We are working really hard on that. Okay. And uh, so let's just look at an application. So let's say LED lighting. And then we also look at something with a microcontroller. And this is so we can see the code interacting with the analog circuit. Yes. Because you, you can do just straight analog simulation on here if you really wanted to, right? Yes. So. Uh, both of it is possible. I yeah. mean, it's just up to you to decide how you want to go about it. But at the end of the day, if you want a complete system, mm -hmm. you need the best of both worlds. Yes. So uh, let's just look at an LED brightness circuit. Yeah. So here in this particular example, we have the microcontroller over here and we have the driver stage and this is the output LED. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this particular stage, what we try to do is uh, we try to visualize or uh, visualize what the human eye would eventually see. Okay. The human eye, as we all know, basically works like a low pass filter. So mm -hmm. that's exactly what we try to do here. Uh, and to make things much more easier, when you come to our examples that you have over here with the microcontrollers, we usually also add the Dave code here. Okay, so, so you could just look at the code yourself. You in could Dave. just look at the code yourself. So you have the basic code there. Uh, it's there, so you just download it and you can drag it and drop it here into the microcontroller. Okay, so and if we open up the microcontroller, can we see the, what it's got going on right now? Yes, we can. So uh, in order for you to do that, uh, we have a section here called as the interactive mode. Okay. And under that, you just click on the transient. Mm -hmm. So you have the debugger window over here and you here you can easily step through your code. So uh, you have the step. So basically you can have a breakpoint somewhere. So it's just like your normal IDE. Yes. So you just introduce a breakpoint and then you can step through your code each line. So uh, uh, once you step through, you can also see the voltages and current over here in the pins. Mm -hmm. So if something's going wrong, you know, uh, if suddenly you see a negative voltage or something <laughs> uh, that shouldn't be there, you know that that is exactly where it is going wrong. And okay. you can right away rectify your code. Uh, and if it was your actual hardware and you were playing with your actual hardware, obviously probably it just burned and you would have to buy a new one. So here, before you actually try it on your uh, expensive hardware sometimes, mm -hmm. you could just uh, work with this. So it makes things much more easier and much more safer for the final hardware. So if you close this and if we just simulate the circuit, I see a simulate transient button down there. So here we see the simulate transient. Uh, we just clicked on the simulate transient and we see the output. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we can see the LED currents over here, uh, the red one, the green one, the blue one. And uh, here is what uh, the human eye would see. So obviously it's a mixture of the RGB. So once the intensity here goes on increasing for all three, obviously the eye sees a much more intense light. So uh, you can uh, basically work on with the PWM signals in the microcontroller mm -hmm. in order to make the, um, the red more or the green more or the blue more. And you can have a variety of output so it's basically what you want so you can just adjust it accordingly and at the end of the day yes you have your perfect solution there well but and we know and we know that um 
light affects the human body differently. So yes. more red light at night helps you fall asleep because it doesn't inhibit melatonin production. Blue light in the morning helps to help you to wake up, feel awake, and it does suppress that melatonin production. So this could help somebody design something like that where the light changes through the course of the day and they can even put their code in there to see how it would work. You got the whole just right. Okay. That's exactly where we were heading towards. So <laughs> this is one of those applications. And um, so this is giving us a lighting application, but I know m one of the things Infineon has excelled at is motor control. Yes. Do you guys have any of those applications? Yes, yeah, we sure do. Uh, I can also show you how exactly you can go to much more applications also. Okay. So uh, we here click on file and then we click on open. And under Infineon examples, you see our whole library. So uh, right now you just mentioned motor control. So let's just go to motor control. And let's just look at the brushless DC motor. This is a very interesting example, Nick. Um, this is a multi-copter. Okay. I mean, how complicated is a multi-copter to build in real life? Well, and you've got something that's trying to balance itself in, I mean, you've got four different motors or potentially even more trying just to stay stable. That's yes. pretty tough. Yeah, you just said it. It is pretty tough. But then once you look at the solution over here, it makes it look much more easier. Mm -hmm. So uh, instead of just jumping into the actual hardware, just play with the tool here. So uh, here you have all the uh, driver stages, all of the motor control. Everything's being controlled by the beautiful microcontroller. So once you have your simulation and mm -hmm. you see that everything is perfect, then you go ahead and build your actual hardware. Okay. As simple as that. So uh, let's just look at the output result for it. And you were mentioning the microcontroller here. This is one of the Infineon microcontrollers, an yes. XMC 1100 series? Uh, this one yeah. is the XMC 1100, yes. Okay. So we have the XMC 1100, 1200, and 1300. This is one of the industrial strength yes, microcontrollers. This is one of the industrial strength microcontrollers. And uh, uh, they're pretty easy to use, they're pretty robust. and they're very well known and uh, coming with the day of software, it makes things just much more easier. Uh, so uh, yeah, Nick. so here in the output window, mm -hmm. uh, we see the microcontroller pin. These are all the, in, uh, the PWM signals that go into the microcontroller and we see a beautiful output over here. So if things were not right, mm -hmm. we would have visually seen it here in the current signals. So we see it's all good we could just probably go and build our own multi-copter. <laughs> that sounds like too much fun. Yeah. Well, so this looks like an awesome piece of software. It really makes it simple if somebody doesn't yet have the resources to get a hold of a development board yes. or something or they might blow up a development board accidentally. Correct. Um, so now they can blow up the software and not worry about it. Yes, and uh, also one more very interesting um, uh, piece of information with the tool is that uh, I have my reference design over here mm -hmm. and I modify the reference design a little bit and I want to share it with you. Okay. It's an email. All I have to do is just go to file. I click on share. I just fill in whoever's email ID I want to send it to uh -huh. and I send it to that person and the person receives it as a URL. So it's basically just a web page. Okay. And he gets it with the changes that I made. So uh, I probably don't have to sit and explain to him with a lengthy email or anything. Mm -hmm. I just make the necessary changes, I send it to him. So it's as simple as that. So to share it with your colleagues and mm -hmm. with your friends or whoever you want to share it with, it's a, it's a very powerful mechanism that probably you cannot achieve with an offline simulator. So this makes for an incredible starting point using all the reference designs that you guys are building into the software. and people can start to experiment and they don't need to have development boards on hand. Yes. What if they want to go even further and design their own system as this into this? Is that something they can get a license for and go even further? Yeah, sure. Uh, so if they want to start building circuits right from scratch, mm -hmm. uh, we have a partner, uh, call, it's a company called DesignSoft. Uh, that is also pretty easy, which is also integrated here within the tool. Uh -huh. So if they go to help, uh, they can just order or upgrade. It's as simple as that and uh, it does not cost much money uh, compared to much more other simulators mm -hmm. available out there. So it doesn't pinch your pocket and uh, you have all of our reference designs in there as well. So you just start building from scratch. You've got an incredible starting point, a lot of power to demonstrate your code, some examples to get you going 
and a, a way to make a complete system. Yes. This looks really cool. Jenny, thank you for sharing it with me. Thank you so much for your time, Nick.